G'day. In today's video, I've got a HP Pavilion 14, oh, X360. This one's got the model number of 14... 14-DY0164TU. And what I'm going to be doing with this one is upgrading the RAM in it and also the SSD. So this one comes as 8 gig and 256, which currently my customers want a bit larger than that. So to begin with, we'll be taking off these rubber feet and under there we should see some screws. Or at least from previous models, that's what I'm going to be expecting. So I'll do a little bit of a pry into it and under it with a pair of tweezers. Hopefully, we can lift it up from there. And there we go, that's got it started. Now the double-sided tape is currently kind of separating off the rubber. So the full removal of that probably was not necessary, you could just remove both the edges. Down for a second here. And all we got is the standard Phillips head screw. So unscrew one and two. Now the very well may be the same across the back here. Dig in, lift up. Now we have one extra screw hidden under here. So three across the back, two across the front. Same scenario, Phillips head screwdriver. So far all the screws look to be of the same length, so they're not really anything to be concerned about. And there. Next up is probably the next bit of challenge, which is lifting the bottom off without damaging any of the plastic. So I'm going to use a plastic pry tool. This plastic will break before this plastic. And there we go. I'm just put it in near the hinge, lift it up, and that's just popped this back bit here. And there I'll switch to another pry tool that I prefer a bit more. This one here. And I should just be able to work my way through the gap. As you can see, that's just started lifting. My a few fingertips under there and just keep going around. There we go. And just a quick pull and we're up and in. So what can we see from here? I see one battery, which I'll disconnect. Just walking that backwards, left and right. Let's disconnect there. Over here we can see a shield for the SSD. And I'm assuming here is a shield for the RAM, which hopefully should be two DIMMs. Looking around, we also have a wireless card over here and a removable power jack over this side. So with our battery disconnected, I'm gonna take this off. And let's reveal what RAM we have inside. So looking at it, you can see these little teeth along here. So I should just be able to put, I'll go off my tweezers, I should just be able to lift up a corner. No, that's being very stubborn. I'll change that to a flathead screwdriver. I'm using my finger here just to kind of leverage it up or lever it rather than push solely on the board. Yeah, let's lift it that side. I do believe this tape here is kind of keeping it stuck down. Get me off just fine. Being a relatively new laptop, it's probably going to do that. This film over here, which does reveal what looks to be another potential PCIe slot. So I'd say one of the, this board has used a number of revisions of machines. 
Okay. Now we get in there. And if I rock, walk it off, similar. There we go. A little bit of panel beating. We went that way. So flip it over this way. And look at here, we have some Samsung RAM. 4 gig running at 3200 megahertz. Extremely over here is going to be the same. Yep, a match pair of DDR4. So we'll take that out and put in two 8 gig sticks to change it from 8 to 16, both running in dual channel mode. And then we have the NVMe that we're putting in there, which is the NV1. But we're going with just some um, crucial 8 gig 3200 megahertz RAM. So installation of that is pretty straightforward. Probably getting into the packaging is probably going to be a challenge. So I don't know. I'm just going to cut it to be quicker. And with the installation of the RAM, we have this little notch taken out here which does match up with the notches here. You do also need to put it on in on a roughly 45 degree angle, like so, and then pull down. So you've got to insert the gold pins in, in between the gold pins there, like that. Then you just simply need to pull down, clicks into position. We'll do the same on the other side. Didn't actually manage to get into that one. And similar scenario, put it in on a 45 degree angle, should hide, or the gold pins should disappear, then push down, click. We'll move this out of the way. As we see, we have one copper cooler there for the CPU, but now with our RAM installed, we've got to line this up and this up with those little teeth that I mentioned earlier. So, usually if you get two corners lined up, the rest of it should just line up as well. Go, and then I should just be able to push down. And that should hold it into position. There we go. Put that back on, fold that back over, stretch it back out. Weird little heat blanket looking thing. I'm not sure what its purpose is. Now if we slide over down to here, we have our NVMe. Down the bottom, down the front right hand corner. I unscrew this screw here. Get that out of the way. This bit should lift up similar to the RAM. Nope, I'll pull that forward. I'd say this screw here may have something to do with it as well. There we go. Ah, it folds over to the side. And it looks like there's a little, the battery may need to be removed to actually get that out. Yep, I believe so. So we'll take the battery out here. Which is one screw, two screws, and two more up here. There we go. Battery should lift up. Do be cautious of the speaker cable running there, so I'll just flip it straight over. It should fold, slide out to the side. We have a thermal pad here, which will transfer to the new SSD in just a moment. I'll take this off. This is a very thin thermal pad, the thermal pad nonetheless. And wiggle that out. We have a PM991 NVMe by Samsung. It's a 256 gig version. And we will be replacing it with a Kingston 500 gig NVMe. Get that out of the packaging. 
carve it out. Wish there was more reusable packaging. As opposed to cannibalizing. There we go. There we go. And similar to the ram, we have one notch taken out. Corresponds with over here. Slides in on a 45 degree angle. Push it in a bit and then fold it down. And it should line up with the circle here. Next up, we need to put the thermal pad back on there. That helps transfer heat evenly over the chip. So it doesn't really, it's not really heat resistant, but it does cause it to have an even level of heat. Since there's no fans going over it or anything like that, it's not really gonna be getting cooled, but it does help transfer it away from the main chip to the more minor parts on there. This looks like it slides back over on a 45 degree. There we go. Well, this bit here may heat up a little bit as well to help absorb some of that heat. But I wouldn't really be counting on it. So now I'll put the screw down here. That's locked it into place. I'll put that fan screw back over here, which I probably really didn't need to remove. And next up, we'll fold this back over and put the battery back in. So just be cautious of where the cable is running so you don't clamp it on anything. Probably more so when we put the bottom cover back, uh, the bottom cover back on, that it doesn't cause any dramas. Zoom out a bit. So then once you put your four screws back in, you should almost be right to seal this up for now. But we'll just do a quick overview of the board. So we can see your wireless card here if you want to update your Wi-Fi connector. We have a power cable here. Various slots that are assumedly for a more advanced model. Hard drive connector, I'm assuming hard drive backlight connector, speaker connector, headphone jack, copper cooler, system fan, the chip cooler is under here. I'm not sure what this connector is for, this one here is for the display. I'm assuming a webcam, maybe a couple other functions, maybe touch. Going over here, hinge, HDMI out, type C. That's pretty much it on the inside there. Now if we reconnect the battery connector. Should just be a matter of lining it up loosely, like so, and pushing it in. It's now reconnected. Next up is putting the bottom cover back on, which is extremely flexible. So this one here is very flexible plastic. So these will be having issues down the line, being the amount of plastic that's there and the, the lack of metal holding this all together. Getting into it, make, it makes getting into it easier, but give it a year and a half of general use, and I do see these will be falling apart. Well, I do predict that they will be falling apart. So I'm just loosely pushing on the plastic and that's clicking back into position. There we go. Next up, we put our three screws, uh, five screws back in, two across the front, three across the back. Now, if you have done a hard drive replacement like I did there, either you will need to do a fresh reinstall of Windows, either you download the Windows 10 media creation tool on a working computer, or the Windows 11 media creation tool, and you should be able to reinstall the OS from there. And I'll just line this up here. I'm just gonna line it up in one corner to begin with, and then, the next, and then I'll work it and meet it in the middle. Yeah. So sometimes I do stretch when you do take them off, so it's best just to work your way to the middle, I find. It usually averages out, makes it fit a bit better. There we go. And or, or if you do have access to cloning software, you may have been able to clone the NVMe SSD prior to replacing it. But typically, if you just got the machine brand new like this one, I'm just going to be doing a fresh install with the Windows 11 creation tool, install Windows onto the new drive, and this would be up and going from there. There we go, not bad. Now I'll stick this one back down as well. 
which as we see here, it does has slightly lifted. I'll see if I can fold that back in. There we go. Matter of lining up one corner. There we go. Push down. And there, and that's how you can upgrade your HP Pavilion X360 14-DY0164TU. Hope this helps, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.